Hello FX fans and welcome back to another episode of Flight Deck and welcome to 2024. Now I'm sure you've seen us already but this month we announced our brand new range and in this episode of Flight Deck I'll be counting down some of my favourite picks from the range. So let's get straight into it. First up the brand new RNLI Shannon class lifeboat starter set. The amazing volunteers of Britain's RNLI service have a very serious job saving lives at sea. They use a super advanced boat called the Shannon class lifeboat for this important task. This high tech vessel is not just powerful but also versatile. It can be launched and brought back to the shore using a mobile slipway. With its water jets it can go really fast and be easily controlled and this awesome boat is designed to work in all kinds of weather. Thanks to the Shannon class lifeboat, RNLI crews can continue their proud tradition of saving lives a tradition that's been going strong for 200 years. And a minimum of 90 pence from the sale of this product will be paid in support of the RNLI. Second up, the new tool Messerschmitt BF109 F4 starter set. With the arrival of the sleek BF109 F in Luftwaffe squadrons along the English Channel coast in 1941, German pilots enjoyed a marked superiority over the RAF Spitfire 5Bs. Of all the 109 variants produced, the F marked the peak of development and was considered the best of the breed. Another favourite of mine is the Boeing Chinook HC-1. Here are some of the features of the Chinook. It has 171 parts, opposable rear door slash ramp, detailed interior including all cabin seating, accurate representation of quilted surfaces in the cockpit, winches and underside hook option, and conical and EAPS intake filter options. As the world's largest operator, the Chinook, outside the US, the Royal Air Force placed an initial order for 33 of these heavy lift behemoths in 1978, with number 18 Squadron taking the honour of becoming Britain's first operational Chinook unit in August 1981. These first helicopters were designated HC-1 Helicopter Cargo Mark I. They'd hardly settled into service when events on the other side of the world required their first overseas deployment. Following the Argentinian invasion of the Falkland Islands in April 1982, five of the RAF's new Chinooks were wrapped in dry-clad PVC protective covers and loaded on the deck of the container ship Atlantic Conveyor. Tragically, all but one of these helicopters would be lost following a missile strike on the vessel, with the surviving Chinook going on to earn legendary status within the RAF. Having already been in the Royal Air Force service for over 42 years, the latest variants of the mighty Chinook seem certain to be in service for many years to come. And the final kit to look at this month is the brand new mould Bristol Bulldog Mark II. The Bulldog features 120 parts, there's three schemes including a Royal Australian Air Force option, subtly rendered fabric skin effect, a multi-part cockpit which includes fuselage framework, ammo bins and machine gun breaches. This design is based on exclusive access to over 1000 original Bristol drawings. Details include camera gun, wing mounted generators, bomb rack and landing flare. The Bristol Bulldog was one of the most important British aircraft of the interwar period, when powerful biplane fighters unquestionably ruled the skies. Initially developed as a private venture by the Bristol Aeroplane Company, the Bulldog was the brainchild of accomplished aircraft designer Frank Barnwell, the man behind the successful Bristol F-2B fighter of the Great War. It was a light, all-metal and fabric-covered fighter, powered by a 440 horsepower Bristol Jupiter engine. Although it was the most capable fighter of the day, the Bulldog was more closely associated with challenging formation flying and spectacular aerobatics at air shows. What the Bulldog did do was help to advance Britain's aviation industry towards the production of the sleek monoplane fighters which would contest the Second World War. Well, that was only a few of my favourites from this year's range. What were your favourites? Let me know in the comments down below. And while you're down there, why not comment what you'd like to see from Flight Deck this year? Would you like to see more how-tos, some designer interviews? Let me know and I'll see what I can do. But that's all from me. As always, please like and subscribe. Nathan, over and out.